We're going dark on this month's Science Top 5. Really dark. When it comes to the universe as a whole, there are many, many things that we still don't know. But of the things we do know, how much of that is a threat to life here on Earth? This is the top five ways the universe can end us. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Science Top 5 with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Yes, the universe is a staggeringly wonderful place, but do not let that beauty fool you. 99.9% .9 of the time, it would end us given the chance. In fact, if we were anywhere else but here on good old Earth, we would be in a lot of trouble very quickly. But how can the universe reach us here on Earth, I hear you ask? Well, sit back and relax and take a look as I guide you through the top five ways that the universe could lead to our demise. Enjoy. First up and in at number five is a coronal mass ejection. The sun is a very complex, very hot and very active body. There is regular activity on the surface and some of that activity exists as solar flares. Solar flares are giant explosions on the surface of the sun that send energy and particles streaming off into space. Most of these are too small to affect Earth, and besides, one would need to be sent straight in our direction anyway, which most are not. Sometimes, on rare occasions, a giant flare will erupt, sending huge amounts of magnetised plasma off into space. That is the coronal mass ejection. Now, these coronal mass ejections are relatively slow, taking anywhere between 12 hours and several days to reach us here on Earth. But they are extremely dangerous. The issue is that any sort of coronal mass ejection that was aimed towards Earth would play havoc with our magnetosphere. That is because of the huge amounts of highly charged particles, and as such, a geomagnetic storm would happen. Now this, would be a problem for our power grids. Usually a small solar storm would at worst cause the northern lights to flare up a bit and in 1989 a massive geomagnetic storm knocked out power across all of Quebec in Canada. 160 years ago English astronomer Richard Carrington witnessed the sun flare up in his own observations. Within the following days a series of coronal mass ejections hit earth causing the Northern Lights to hit as far south as Cuba. If that sort of event happened today, where we're much more reliant on electrical power, the whole world would take quite some hit. We are talking lights going out, internet shot, any device that draws current from the wall, dead. Electronically controlled water supplies and sewage treatment systems would stop working. Heating and air conditioning would fail. Perishable food and medication, lost. ATMs, useless petrol pumps would go offline, etc, etc. And if you relied on GPS for any aspect of your life, you can say goodnight. Some of these effects would last years and the impact would be felt globally. You could possibly argue that we'd never recover. Right, if you think that was bad, wait till you hear the rest. In at number four is the old Hollywood favorite, the asteroid strike. There are a lot of asteroids in the solar system, more than we could probably count, but are they all planet killers, and are they potentially a threat? Well, yes and no. It is no secret that the theory regarding the extinction of the dinosaurs is that the Earth was hit by an asteroid at what is now modern day Mexico. We are talking a six mile wide asteroid that caused some serious devastation with the power of 10 billion atomic bombs and wiping out 75% of all known life at the time. It was an absolute beast of an asteroid, smashing a 100 mile wide crater in the sea floor and vaporising the surrounding land, causing a massive hole which the sea rushed back into, causing a 100 metre high tsunami that went as far inland as Illinois. The asteroid came in at a speed of 12 miles per second, the heat blast incinerating anything within 1500 kilometres and the impact sending up over 350 billion tonnes of sulphurous gas into the atmosphere. This would have blocked the sun and cooled the planet. 
In short, it completely ruined us. So how many asteroids are out there right now that could do that? Well, if we're looking at the dinosaur killer in particular, not many, but NASA has categorized around 2,000 potentially hazardous objects, 156 of which are larger than one kilometer in diameter. The Torino scale is used to indicate the threat from these potentially hazardous objects. And in all of recorded history, no object has ever been scored more than four. The dinosaur killer would have been classed as a 10, which you can see occurs on average once every 100,000 years or so. Um, the dinosaur killer was 66 million years ago. Okay, next up and in at number three is local gamma ray bursts. Gamma ray bursts are the brightest electromagnetic blasts known to occur in the universe and can originate from the collapse of the most massive stars or the collision of two neutron stars. Now, if a gamma ray burst was emitted in the Milky Way and was directed towards Earth, we could be in all sorts of problems. The damage would not be done to us directly, but the Earth's atmosphere could be in real problems as a gamma ray burst could seriously deplete the ozone layer that protects us from UV radiation. This would not only leave us exposed to these harmful rays, but additionally, some ozone could end up in the lower atmosphere. As nice as it is up there protecting us, ozone is toxic to humans and can also impede photosynthesis. As you can imagine, it would be a slippery slope from here and a very, very poor outlook for life here on Earth. Okay, so we're working our way through this list quite nicely. And next up in at number two is nearby supernova. Once a massive star has exhausted all of its fuel, it can no longer provide radiation pressure and gravity wins out, causing the whole star to collapse. When this happens, the temperature can reach epic proportions and the shock wave reach tens of light years. So what is a safe distance when it comes to supernovas? Well, if one went off within 30 light years, we could be in a bit of bother. The ozone layer, could again be victim to the X-rays and high energy gamma rays emitted, which could also potentially ionize all of the nitrogen and oxygen in the atmosphere, leading to a huge buildup of nitrous oxide. To top all of that off, we could also start seeing mutations and accelerated climate change due to those high levels of radiation. We need to be looking at a distance between 50 and 100 light years away before we can be relatively happy that there'll be no ill effects. The closest potential candidate for a supernova is 150 light years away. So fingers crossed, if it does go off, we're just far away enough to escape its reach. Right, what a journey so far. And that brings us nicely to the final thing on our list and the number one thing for how the universe can end us. And quite honestly, the most frightening thing ever, the magnetar. It is number one on this list, not because of the proximity of these objects or because of the likelihood of encountering one, but because of the sheer damage it would cause. A magnetar is essentially an incredibly dense neutron star, which in itself is also an incredibly dense object left over after a supernova explosion. As their name suggests, they are incredibly magnetic objects. The magnetic field here on Earth is approximately 0.6 Gauss. An MRI scanner can reach 30,000 Gauss. The strongest magnet we have on Earth, 400,000 Gauss. A magnetar has a magnetic field strength of a quadrillion Gauss. Now, as long as a magnetar stays out of our solar system, we should be okay. But if one was to say, for example, stray as close as the moon, then every single magnetic device on Earth would be wiped within a thousand kilometers and it's game over. Your atoms would get stretched out of shape and you would literally disintegrate. However, this isn't the only risk. A magnetar can also experience star quakes, which are essentially where an incredibly large amount of energy is released over an incredibly short time scale. If this happens within 10,000 light years, the surface of the earth would be wiped clean in the blink of an eye. The closest magnetar to us is 9,000 light years away. Right, now that I've cheered you up, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching. Really do appreciate it. That was a fantastic list, one of my favorites so far. If you enjoyed it, then please, please do like and subscribe. 
I have been Simon Dan. Thank you very much. I am back for Tim Ford Tuesday next week where we'll be taking our final look at Kent the Science Gent. See you then.